the question of how many participants are enough is probably one of the most difficult and frustrating questions with regard to qualitative research precisely because hardly any guidelines exist on this issue so in this video I will talk about how many participants are enough for a qualitative study and how to convincingly justify your choice It can be quite frustrating that as a student uh, working on your research proposal or a researcher working on your uh, funding application, for example, quite often you are expected to state the number of participants that you are planning to recruit. However, this is, as I said, very frustrating because how are you supposed to know how many participants will be enough for your study prior to conducting it? For me, however, a good way around this problem is to use the concept of saturation. Saturation is the point at which you have exhausted your data, your findings. So when you're adding new data set to your existing data set and you're analyzing that data, you're not really finding anything new or groundbreaking. So you're basically finding the same ideas, concepts or themes in your data, which means that you don't need to recruit any more participants. Of course, as pretty much anything in academia, this concept of saturation has been criticized by some researchers. And these researchers have argued that in qualitative research, because it's so dynamic and subjective, there is no single point when you can say that you have exhausted your data, because whenever you look at that data, you can find something new. And I agree with this claim to some extent. Of course, and I have said it myself many times in my videos, Qualitative data analysis is extremely subjective and I even said that if you want to find something in your data, you will find it. So of course there is no clear point when you can say that you have found everything or discovered everything in your data. However, if you have any experience in analyzing qualitative data, you will know that most definitely there is a point when you just feel that your new findings or your new uh, data sets do not add that much value to your existing findings. So, uh, usually when you add a new data set or analyze a new interview transcript, you are just supporting the previous uh, findings or uh, the emerging thematic framework that you have, but you're not really seeing anything that either contradicts uh, the previous findings that you already have by this uh, stage, or adds something completely new or something that changes your whole perspective on the data. When you reach this point will depend on a number of factors. For example, what kind of methodology you have in your study or what approach to data analysis uh, you have adopted or uh, how long and in-depth your interview transcripts are. For me, because I like my qualitative data analysis to be very in-depth and detailed, uh, this point tends to occur somewhere between the 5th and the 10th interview. So, as I said, by that time, I just feel that uh, the new data sets do not add that much value. So, there is no reason for me to recruit more participants, for example. Now, however, you may be wondering how this idea of saturation is supposed to help you decide uh, how many participants to recruit, since in order to reach saturation you have to start recruiting the participants and then conduct your data analysis. However, what I found to be an effective way to argue my uh, choice of the sample size prior to this study is to use the previous findings of uh, the studies that have analyzed other studies and analyze precisely the point of saturation, so when this point occurred and how many participants were needed in order to reach this saturation. There are studies that have analyzed several hundreds of uh, previous research uh, studies specifically with this uh, idea in mind to determine how many participants were needed to reach the saturation. And they concluded, for example, that in general for uh, qualitative research this number tends to be somewhere around 20 and 50. So you'll need somewhere around 20 and 50 participants to reach uh, this saturation. And then specifically, uh, with regard to specific methodologies, they also argued that in grounded theory studies, for example, this number tends to be around uh, 20. So when you're preparing for your study and you need to justify the choice of 
the number of participants, what you can do is to use uh, these previous uh, results or these uh, previous findings. And there, there is nothing more uh, convincing in academia than uh, evidence based on previous research. So you can say, for example, that uh, based on the review of uh, the literature or the research that investigated this point of saturation, you decided to initially recruit 20 participants because you believe this should be enough to reach that uh, saturation in your study. However, you are also open to the idea of recruiting more participants uh, if you don't reach that point. As I said, this is a convincing argument and a good justification for your uh, choice of the sample size and you can't really be criticized uh, for basing this decision on your own judgment. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing.